What are the chances that some reserve list cards are underpriced? That right now they're just not being appreciated the way they used to be? Is there a chance, is there an opportunity for some of these cards to come back? Are you willing to spend a couple of dollars? Well, stick around in this video. I want to show you a few things. In the world of Magic the Gathering, a card better be able to do something or most players simply ignore it. Welcome back everyone, MTG Moxman here. Thanks again for hanging out with me on the channel today. And no, I didn't include Soldevi Excavations in today's video. It is the card of the channel. I love that card, but it's not one of the cards I want to talk about today. Most of the cards I'm going to share with you are super cheap. They don't cost a lot of money, but especially being played in Commander, a lot of these cards are going to offer some versatility and a little bit more playability than people give them credit for. I mean, in casual formats, most of these cards can actually be pretty devastating. And the way the reserve list is being treated right now, the way that most of the money is flying up there with the high-end cards, the reserve list, top end, you know? I want to say the top 5%. We got dual lands, you got the Gaia's Cradles, you got the Sarah's Sanctus, maybe even a Telerian Academy or two, and don't forget yourselves a Tabernacle or maybe a piece of power. But down at the bottom there, with the sludge and stuff, are those $1 and $2 cards. Some of these cards have been higher than that, of course, that I'm going to share with you today. We'll talk about the pricing. But why not spend four bucks and get four copies now in case they ever rebound? And after I show you these cards, you might see they're a little bit more interesting than a lot of people give them credit for. So I thought today we're going to start out with Fatal Lore. Now this is from Alliances. It is a reserve list card and it's basically like a dollar. So what do we get for this dollar? What is this card even offering to players that is different from what it was 20 years ago and that is the playability factor of some of these cards that can do more than they used to be able to when you look at a card like fatal lore and i look at this thing and i say okay it's a forecasting cost black spell too black too generic so i've definitely got to have a black heavy handed type of deck I'm not going to be splashing in one black. I've got to have some dedication to the black mana sphere because i got to be able to cast this thing. So what is it going to do then? Too generic, no big deal. It is a forecasting cost spell, so this better be able to provide us with something. And when I talk about providing, what I mean is as a sorcery, it's not as fast as an instant. This thing gives a target opponent a choice. You either let me draw three cards or you choose and bury up to two target creatures that opponent controls and he or she draws three cards. Now in the old days when there was no real token generation, this would be a real setback, a real downturn of events to let it all go. But now with the case of upcoming cards like the Idol of the False Gods, this thing can create 0-1 Eldrazi tokens, right? We have all kinds of other tokens that can enter the battlefield that can now appear to take that space of, you know, your old creatures you didn't want to get rid of like a Shivan Dragon or maybe a Nightmare, maybe even a Force of Nature back in the day. Maybe even an amazing card like the Lord of Tressorhorn, guys. Remember that epic card? But either way, with the Idol of the False Guards being able to create Eldrazi tokens to be able to be sacrificed, depending on how you want to play your commander game and how you want to utilize a card like Fatal Lore, it is now an option maker, not an option taker. It is not drawing away from you your options. It is offering you and the people at the table, especially the opponent you're controlling, by saying, what do you want to do here? You want to let me draw three cards, you're going to bury two of your creatures and draw three cards. And maybe that's exactly what they need. Maybe that's why you chose them to be able to do it. The options available with a card like Fatal Lore are just a little bit underrated nowadays. Token generation is so so prevalent inside Commander now that even cards like Tavash Savat, I mean, this amazing Planeswalker here who can be your commander and he can partner, don't forget, this guy allows you the plus two option of creating two zero one black thralls right there. So depending on the deck you're building in and the color sphere, the color wheel you want to work within, even cards like, of course, the Awakening Zone, this allows you more creation and it also gives mana. So the idea that you have options available to you with a card like Fatal Lore for a dollar, um, I don't know why it's not five, six bucks anymore, but a dollar seems like a very easily obtainable thing for most players. Now, our next card. 
This is Spectral Guardian from Mirage. Now, yes, this card's been the $10, $15 level, but it's lost like 90% of its value. It's back down to a dollar. That's how inexpensive this card can be. And it is a take on Guardian Beast from Arabian Nights. It's a take on it. It has parallels to it, but it's not exactly the same deal. Now, this one, of course, is mainly of, of a color that most people wouldn't think of protecting their artifacts being white. It's kind of a green thing to add protectionism, but in this kind of idea, the Spectral Guardian here, for the two white and two generic, he's a two, three, he's a very weak creature. He's not gonna be something you're gonna be pounding on people with, but at least you have a bit of a blocker if you need it. And yes, he's still bolt bait, I understand that, but that's not his job. His job when he comes into play, it's great that he's a creature as an option, but his actual job is to protect your artifacts, to make sure that the big bad boys of comedy that you've got coming down the line or that you've just played out, don't leave the battlefield. Because this guy says summon guardian. As long as spectral guardian is untapped, non-creature artifacts cannot be the target of spells or effects. This allows you to layer out what you're trying to get done. This allows you to layer out heavy casting cost artifacts that you don't want to be targeted or removed after they hit the battlefield. Yes, there are other ways of adding hexproof, but you're trying to multi-layer it to make it as difficult as possible to stop your creatures, stop your artifacts, stop whatever you're trying to get your gameplay done. And in this case, the Spectral Guardian is going to protect those artifacts. Now, what I mean is when you look at some of the artifacts available, like the Portal to Phyrexia, this thing costs a huge mana amount to dump onto the battlefield. I've seen him in Commander a few times already. He's likely going to have a home for a very long time and years to come because of what he does. He adds something special as a heavy hitting guy. He clears the battlefield of multiple creatures. Not only that, he allows you to bring back creatures and put them directly into play, and that is something that shouldn't be ignored, okay? Now, let's take a closer look at this, all right? When you take a look at this artifact, it's a mythic, all right, from Brothers War. When the Portal of Phyrexia enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices three creatures, definitely meant for commander. At the beginning of your upkeep, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It's a Phyrexian in addition to other types. So that's what I mean. Cards like this are now protected because of the Spectral Guardian. And the idea that the Spectral Guardian is a dollar means buying four of them is not gonna, not gonna cost you guys a lot of cash, okay? I think you can afford to skip a coffee one day to buy yourself a couple copies. Now, here's Thawing Glaciers. This is more expensive at the whole $17.72. But this is one of those cards that most people have now given up on. They don't use this card very often. It does see some playing commander. I've used it in Vintage Legacy, of course, Kitchen Table Magic. But the idea of this card going back up to $75 or above seems very, very far flung for most players to comprehend a card like this going up. And there's reasons for that. It just seems too slow, but you've got to find ways of building into your deck. This is a land that comes into play tapped. Already kind of a, a downturn. But it says, one... Search your library for a basic land card and put it into play tapped. This does not count towards your one land per turn limit. Shuffle your library afterwards. At the end of your turn, return the Thawing Glaciers to its owner's hand. Well, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? It's interesting to think what you can do because the Thawing Glaciers itself, and by the way, here I'm just showing you the DCI promo version because it is a gorgeous piece of artwork and I love the card. And it's a more expensive version because, again, it was the Judge promo ones. You can't get them anymore. It's about probably... I don't know how many are out there, but it's not that easily found, but still a great card. But the idea that this card can be untapped multiple times is something you need to consider. Because a card that's coming up again is um, the Deserted Temple. And it just says untap target land. So being able to untap the Thawing Glacier more than once in a turn to thin out your deck. Being able to untap it on other people's turns. Because it says return it at the end of your turn. That's disgusting if you use it on somebody else's turn and then use it on your turn, like you get a whole bunch of crazy stuff going on when people don't expect it. And they're not gonna be able to utilize this the same way. If you build around it properly, you can you can really thin your deck out by two or three, four lands a turn if you really know how to you know sync this up and really make it play. Now I could go on at length 
about a whole bunch of the creatures out there that will allow you to untap lands. Some will say basic land, which isn't going to help you. You need to be able to untap that amazing thawing glaciers to ramp up your mana as much as possible. And I think it's a really doable thing nowadays in Commander. And I think it's just one of those underrated cards that people don't appreciate the way they should. And when you build around it the right way, it becomes a real threat to players. Now, the good thing about the threat level of something like Thawing Glaciers is most people don't see it coming for the first little while. It doesn't look like a lot until you really start using it. So don't be pumping it up right away and drawing attention to yourself. Thin your deck out slowly, put an extra land or two out, just kind of bleed into it, make sure you play that humble card and it will take you pretty far. It, it allows options and options are good when you got big bad beasties or massive spells you want to cast and this is one of the ways you get to ramp up that mana at a minimal expense for what the card can actually do for you. It's an amazing card. So I just want to share just a couple of cards today. I could have gone on for a lot longer, but I think the time frame for people to be able to watch an hour long video showing more cards may not be to everyone's appeal, but if it is, drop some comments in the comment section that you want a longer video on this type of topic. I'll be happy to cover it if we got enough people who are interested in a more long form of these types of cards and the values held within. But either way, I hope you guys take an opportunity to pick up some of these cards while they're cheap. There's always a chance. No matter how impossible you feel it is, there is a chance the cards will rebound sooner than people realize. And the problem is people like to take advantage of these when it's too late. They say, oh, I should have bought this. That I was told that I didn't take that opportunity. We're talking a couple of dollars here. Other than that, Thawing Glaciers, the other two cards are next to nothing. They cost nothing to buy. They are cheaper than some bulk rares at your local store. So it just tells you nobody wants them. But when nobody wants them and nobody's thinking about it and you can find an idea, find a light bulb turned on saying, I could try to do this. I can work this in this way. I could build this and synergize these colors together. That's when you have something that nobody else expects and can make for such an amazing play experience. Either way, guys, thanks again. I want to thank you all for stopping by the channel. Thanks for hanging out with the Moxman today. A reminder, if you enjoyed today's content, if you make it to the end of this video, as I, as I grab poor Deadpool's head and I cradle him next to mine with a smile, then you deserve to be here. Shop smart, shop S smart. All right, guys, have a great day today. We'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy. Yep, we're here at the end of the video, and this is a chance for the shout-outs, the thank you to all the amazing patrons we have here on the channel supporting each and every day. Because of those patrons, guys, yep, you guessed it, daily uploaded content is made possible. And we love the magic conversation, so we got to keep this rolling. Thanks again to my patrons and my YouTube membership members. I will see you guys tomorrow with another video. Have a great day today, everyone. Okay, a couple of things to cover. Number one, I will be updating the Patreon at the beginning of the month. Uh, some, we have one or two new people come on, a few people have to come off. Um, so I will update that as soon as possible. It's, it's one of the least things on my priority list. I figure as long as I got your name in all the right places where it's important, uh, bear with me if it takes me a while to get you there. Um, if you're one of my regular viewers, thanks for being here at the end of the video. So many great cards are so underrated right now. I can't believe how some of these cards used to be 15, 20 bucks. And now they're like a dollar. The idea of grabbing 50 copies for 50 bucks blows my mind to see they're that cheap. Now, again, that's because they don't get a lot of gameplay. Don't be fooled into thinking these are some amazing expensive cards, but are they really so utterly useless that they can't show up in a deck? Fatal Lore is amazing. Four mana to draw three or blow up a couple of creatures? That's a good thing. Is that what Martha Stewart would say? That's a good thing? Oh, talking about my mom now. It's crazy. Either way, my mom loved that show. Anyway, guys, thanks again for hanging out. Thanks for being here. The coffee's in hand. The video is done. And you know what? Let's all go have some fun. Yeah, rhyming. Great.